In this section, I'm going to give you a brief overview of how to use the browser developer tools, what the HTML DOM structure is, how to use tags and elements, HTML attributes, and what absolute and relative paths are. The purpose of this section is so that you understand all these concepts at a high level so that when we get to automation, you understand what we're talking about. In this course, we're going to be using the browser's developer tools quite often. Every browser comes with its own version of the developer tools, but I find that Chrome has the best uh, to access the developer tools using your Windows computer. Open up Chrome and you can do it one of three ways. You can hit F12, which will pop it open. You can go into their menus, go to more tools and developer tools, or you can right click anywhere on the screen and do inspect and then that will pop open the developer tool. So doing the right click inspect is what we're going to be doing most of the time because we're going to want to see a specific information about a specific thing on the page. Um, so as you can see inspect took us to the elements tab here. Uh, you can see the DOM here, all the stuff included on the site and whatnot. Uh, also there's things like console. We'll be using this one where you do the JavaScript lesson and there's sources which shows you all the files that are being used uh, network we're not going to get into performance memory all these other ones we're not going to get into so we're just going to be focusing on the elements for the most part and and console for this course the HTML structure of a web page is referred to as the DOM or the document object model so let me give you an example of what that looks like so on a web page, you may have something like a body. Within that body, you can have h1 in paragraph tags. Within there, you can have a div, which has h2 in paragraph tabs. And within there, you can have a div with h3 in paragraph tags. So let's see what this looks like on an actual web page. So let me open this up. So this is how the browser renders our HTML. So you can see there's, let me move this down here. So here's the body. The body has a blue border around it. So you can see the body goes all the way to, over the whole page and has an H1 in paragraph. And then the next section has a black border, which has an H2 in paragraph. And the next section has a red border, which has an H3 in paragraph. So basically what the DOM is, is the structure of this. So you can see how it's indented so that you can see that this tag contains these elements, this contains these elements, this contains these elements, and so forth. So the browser knows how to interpret that and how to render your page properly. When working with HTML, you're going to be working with two main things, tags and elements. Let me show you an example. A tag is written like this. So less than the, le the letter or abbreviation for the tag and a greater than symbol. Most tags have a closing tags. So that just means less than a forward slash, the same letter, and then a greater than symbol. So opening tag, closing tag. All right. An element is the opening clo and closing tag and anything that might be in between. So this is an element. This is also an element. If I save this and run it on my browser, you will be able to see that this paragraph now displays. Not all tags have closing tags. So example is a break. If I save this and reload, you can see that there's a gap there. That is caused by the break. Also, an HR tag makes a horizontal line across. So that doesn't need a closing tag also. So just remember, tags are just the guys inside of the less than and the greater than symbol. So there's an opening and a closing. And then elements are the whole thing, opening through closing and whatever my, else might be in between. HTML attributes are bits of code that you add to an HTML tag to give it some more information about 
what to do with it. So for example, let me make a paragraph tag again. So an attribute could be something like an ID, or it could be a class. So difference between ID and class is that an ID has to be unique on the page. So for example, if I have an ID of one, and then I try to make another ID of one, this is bad. You need to make sure that the IDs are distinct. So I could do an ID of two. However, classes are something that can be shared. So if I have a class of A, I can share that class with anything on the page. So I can have as many classes of A as I want, and they will all be sharing all that stuff. So what we use the IDs and classes for is mainly the main purpose is for CSS, so for styling, so we can link our style sheet to our HTML, and we can tell it that when it has an ID of one, give it this particular style. If it has a class of A, give everything with a class of A that particular style. Also, we can use it with our coding of jQuery and JavaScript. So we can say ID one, do this when I click on it or class A, do this when somebody does something. When pointing to file paths in your HTML code, there are two ways you can do it. You can use an absolute path or a relative path. Absolute path means that you're pointing to a very specific location. So as you can see, this is going to a drive letter and then the, all these folders and so forth until it gets to this uh, file name for this image. A relative path is going to take whatever your current directory is, and it's going to go from that directory and find wherever your file is. So for example, let me show you my where this file is. So this file is here. So I'm in the sample HTML file. So what I need to do is I need to do a dot slash. So this basically takes me out and it lets me look at what I have. So I have images. So going into the images folder and then going into the superhero PNG file. So if I save this and I refresh, so now I have two of the images. So one, this is at an absolute path and the second one's at a relative path. So you can see that this is much better if you're going to be copying and your code over to somebody else's machine because then it'll still work as long as they don't change the file structure. And this is good for when you're working on actually publishing it out to the web because this is not gonna, on the, on the web server, it's not gonna be the Y drive or the C drive or whatever. It's gonna be whatever folder that you put it into, but it's gonna know that whenever you're using this sample.html file, it's gonna go out and into this images folder and then find the superhero PNG from there. This section is a brief overview of CSS. We're going to do a quick walkthrough of CSS syntax and how to use it. And then we're going to take a look at Bootstrap. Bootstrap is the framework that we're going to be using to build our sample web page later on in the course. CSS stands for cascading style sheets. What that basically means is that you can take one file that specifies all the style for your whole website and you can apply that style across different pages. In order to do that, you have to do things like add attributes, like IDs and classes, and you have to create a file that tells you what to do with those attributes and classes. So for example, syntax for CSS is this. So it starts with a selector, and a selector can be things like the ID. So IDs, Selectors start with the hashed sign. Class selectors start with a dot. And you can just point to the actual tag selector also. So this is a paragraph. So all paragraphs on my page would have a color of blue. So it starts with the selector. And then it has a property. And then you give it the value. So there's different properties that are available. There are a lot of them. So I'm using border, background color, color, and then the value is just what value the style is going to apply. 
So take a look at our first one here. So we have a div with an ID of div1. So you can see that ID of div1 has a border of solid black of one pixel. So you can see our div1 only has that border. Okay. The next one we have a class of divs and you can actually see we have two elements that have the class of divs and then you can see divs has a background color of burly wood. So you can see both of them have burly wood. Okay. And then the last one you can see there's no more attributes, but on our style sheet, you can see that we're using a paragraph selector. So every paragraph element is going to have a text color of blue. Bootstrap is a popular framework that quickly enables you to build responsive web pages with little effort. So going to the getbootstrap.com website, let's go and take a look at a few examples. So if you go over to documentation, and you go over to components, you can see they have things such as alerts, buttons, carousels, drop downs, and pretty much everything else you would ever want for your web page. And they give you instructions, the code, and you can even do things like a li live demo so you can see what the code will actually do. So for the most part, you just have to copy this into your HTML and it should work. Uh, you might have to make a few tweaks um, to make it say or do exactly what you want, but for the most part, it will look and behave the same.